Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're looking at data store service. So if you want to save data between individual play sessions of your game, then this is the video to watch. Stick around and I'll show you how. Okay, so we're in the basic city template and you'll see I've got this script in service script service called data. It's a pretty simple little script. All I do is I get the player service, wait for a player to join, and then I create a simple leader stats for them. Uh, we just have a value called dollars. And if I go in and I play the game, you'll see uh, when we load in, here we are, we've got zero dollars. Uh, it's obviously some kind of driving game. Maybe we could drive about the, uh, the city if we wanted to. And if I went onto the server here, and on the server, I gave myself uh, some money. Let's say I go into leader stats and I say, I want $500, 500 of your finest dollars, please. And I keep playing, you can see I've, I've got $500 in the game now. Uh, but if I was then to leave and then rejoin, well, obviously that data is not going to save. So now I'm straight back to zero. No, all my progress has been lost, doesn't it? So if you want to store data, we're going to need something called data store service. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable local data store service equals game get service data store service. And once we've got that service, we need a database to store things in. Now you can have as many of these as you like, but I tend to just have one and we'll just call this uh, database so then it's data store service and we use the get data store function and then you type the name of it uh, I'm just going to call this data just nice and easy and then I'm also going to create something called what I call session data so if we think of this database that's where all the data is actually saved and stored and then I'm gonna have a session data just to keep track of which players are currently in the game. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to want to save data when the player leaves. So I've got a player added function, but I'm gonna need a player removed function. So let's go down here and we'll say function player uh, leaving, have a player parameter again, and then we'll activate this function. So players dot player removing event. And then we can connect that to the player leaving function we've just created. There we go. And of course we can test this is working just by printing out uh, player is leaving. And so if I now click play and uh, I'm in the game and I click stop, we should see Gnome code is leaving down in the output. Now, sometimes this event won't actually fire, uh, in which case it sometimes helps to open up a test server using the local server, but it seems to be firing right now. So that's good, all good. Um, but the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check if they have any data to store. So we'll delete this and we'll check if the, we'll look inside the session data and we'll see if there's anything inside the session data with the player's user ID. Because the last thing we want to do is save a bunch of empty data. So this is really important and this is how a lot of uh, data store issues happen is if someone joins your game, they don't load any data by mistake and then they leave and you save a load of blank data. So you wipe all of their saved data. Obviously, that's no good. Uh, so now we know there is some data within the session to save. Uh, let's go ahead and save it. So we're going to create a few variables. Local success equals nil. And local error message, that will equal nil as well. And then local attempt. And this is going to be one initially. So then what we're going to do is we're going to try and set a sync. So we say database set a sync, which allows us to take a key. So in this case, it's the player's user ID 
and assign some data. And in that case, it's going to be the session data and the user ID key within that session data. Now, this function isn't always guaranteed to succeed. It's possible we'll try to save data and won't be able to connect to the Roblox servers. So to make this a little bit more redundant, we're going to do two things. First of all, uh, we're going to wrap it inside a P call. So we can say success error message equals P call wrap it inside of a function. Oop, P call brackets function and then close it off down here. Oh, my typing is all over the place today, isn't it? Success and make sure we are using the database. There we go. Uh, so this will either be true or false, depending on whether this actually works. So it's a protected call, which allows us to check if the function's working correctly. But then if it doesn't work correctly, we will probably want to try again. So we're going to wrap this entire thing in a repeat until loop. So we'll move it inside of there. And then we're going to repeat until we have success or we've tried, say, five times. So if the attempt equals five and then inside the loop after that, we will need to add to the loop. So we'll say attempt plus equals one. So it's starting on one, uh, but then each time we go around the loop, we'll add to it until we get to five. And then if we actually are uh, successful or if we're not successful, I should say, if not success, uh, then we're actually going to want to warn into the output here and leave a little message. So we'll type out that error message uh, and then we're going to actually wait. So we'll say task dot wait and maybe we'll wait uh, two or three seconds is probably fine. Let's wait three seconds before we try again and then Outside of this repeat loop, we'll say if we were successful, then we will print out uh, data saved for, and we can type the, the name of the player. And uh, else, if we weren't able to save, else uh, we can say warn, unable to save for, player dot name so that's our player saving now we just need to have our player loading so if we go up into our player added and we're going to do a very similar thing so we're going to have a in here we can have a local success value again that's going to be nil we're going to have a local player data value, which will also equal nil initially. And again, we'll have an attempt counter, which will start off at one. And in fact, let's just copy this little repeat loop. Okay. So we'll copy this and paste it up here. Um, but this time, instead of it being error message, we are going to set that to player data. And instead of set a sync, we want to get the data. So we use get a sync and then obviously there's no data to send so we're just getting any data with that id and we want then want to return it this time so we're going to return the value of this to the player data variable and if there's not success then we'll uh, this will actually be equal to a error as before so if it's not able to return this, the protected call will return an error. And so we can warn it down the output and we'll wait again and we'll keep going until we've had five attempts. But if we are successful, so if success, then we will print uh, connected to database. And then we want to check if we have found any data or not, because we might connect to the database but there might not actually be anything saved with that ID. So let's check. We'll say if uh, there was no player data, if not player data, then we will need to assign some data. So we can just print out to the output again, uh, assigning default 
data. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a little table of data. So we'll say player data equals, and we use these squiggly brackets, and then we're going to type out all the data we want. So I'm going to have a value called dollars, and this can be equal to anything. It's just our starting amount. I want them to start off with uh, just $50, okay? And then as well, seeing as it's kind of a car game, maybe a city game, I could also store some other random values in here. I could have cars, that could be a table, and maybe we would have a Ferrari, a Mazda, and Audi, just for good measure, okay? So we're storing three, three strings, three car names, uh, just for another example. And then after we've set up this default data, we're going to want to make sure that whatever uh, the session data, remember that's the big table that stores all of the players data in this game server. We're going to go want to go to that, get the player dot user ID, and we're going to set it to player data, which means it's either going to be the default data that we just set up or the data that we got back from our database. And so once we've uh, done that, uh, maybe we will just set up some kind of uh, alternative. If it wasn't successful, then we can say else, uh, what else new line, warn, uh, unable to get data for, and we'll print out the player's user ID. And then if we've tried five times, uh, we've waited 15 seconds essentially, and we haven't been able to load anything, then we probably just want to go ahead and remove them from the game. So then we'll say player, pick, and we could just type out a message, uh, unable to load your data. Try again later. Write a little message like that. Uh, and we could go ahead and click play now and just check this is working for us. Uh, but if we do that, we'll notice it's not actually uh, going to work for us. We're going to get a API services rejected your request with error. And these are going to stack up now three and it'll do four and then it'll wait another three seconds and we'll get our number five and then, oh look, we've been kicked. Oh dear. So what's going on here? Well, we know our kick message is working at least, um, but the problem is we haven't enabled those permissions. So what we need to do is we need to make sure it's a published game. So I'm going to hurry ahead and publish this to Roblox, create a new game. I'll just call this data store test and we'll create that. It's going to reload the Roblox studio window. Uh, it's called it name codes place number 86. It, Roblox Studio sometimes does that, but at least we know it's a published place now. And we can go to the home and the game settings page. And if we click here and we go to security, we will find enable studio access to API services. And if we toggle that and we save, and then I click play again, I should now have connecting to database, assigning default data in the output. So we know we have connected. Of course, I've just got my zero dollars as before, but hang on, you're thinking, didn't I set a default of 50? What's going on there? Well, let's hit stop. Uh, what's actually happened there is that, and when I've hit stop, just uh, you can see it said data saved for name code. So we know it's saved as well. Uh, but what's happened is because we're using these leader stats values and we haven't really connected these leader stats values into this uh, random table we just created. So once we've got the data, what we should do is set its value. So we have it called dollars and we'll say, we'll copy the name of the variable dollars dot value. And we want that to be equal to the session data and then the player.user ID. And then you want to get the value of dollars. So we can put dot dollars. 
there we go and we also want to react to if this uh it's an int value right it's an int value if it ever changes we want to change the value what's in stored in the table as well so i'm gonna say just below here dollars dot changed connect that to a function and then all i'll do is i'll say that session data player.userid.dollars dot dollars and i'll make that equal to whatever the new value of dollars is so we're making sure that these two values always match up and then right to the bottom we're setting the leader stats parent to the player so now when i load in you can see i have got 50 dollars next to my name and if i was to go onto the server again and change that value now into the leader stats and i set the dollars to a really big number and we can see it's taken effect i've now got one million dollars and if I hit stop, you'd see in the output data saved for gnome code. And if I hit play again and rejoin the game, there we go. My $1 million has saved. Now, a quick note in terms of editing data stores. Uh, if you go and edit, uh, say, one of the names of these, uh, then it won't take effect to what's already saved. And so you do need to be careful with editing this as it won't take effect across the board. Now, there is a plugin for this uh, called Data Store Editor. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you have to purchase it. Uh, but it's very nice and easy to use. If you're wanting a free way to ed edit these, then I'll probably do a, another standalone video on that if people are interested. Fantastic. So there we go. That brings us to the end of this video. Hold up a minute. There's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is handling server shutdowns. Because at the moment, we've just assumed that all our players are going to join the game so we can use the player add event, and then they're going to leave the game with the player removing event. Now, of course, if you just shut down the game manually for an update or Roblox goes down or something, then this event is not going to fire and it could result in data not being saved. So we're going to create a new function called server shutdown. And then we're going to call it and we use the game and it has a handy hook that we can hook into called the bind to close. Okay. And then we can connect that into the function. So the server shutdown function. So whenever you shut down the game, there's a little 30 second window where we can run a piece of code. And in that 30 seconds, we're gonna try and run through and save all of the players. So we'll do a loop through every single player. So if I player in iPairs, uh, get the player service and get the players. Do, and then what we're gonna to want to do is we're gonna to want to call our save data function. The save function is called player leaving. So we can just call this function here like so. Now it seems we've only got 30 seconds to do this and we wouldn't want any individual player to sort of end up yielding while we wait for all repeated uh, attempts to happen. So if we want them all to happen sort of at the same time, we probably want to spawn a new thread. So if I put task.spawn function like so, and then I can wrap the player leaving function inside of this new spawned task, which means that I can keep looping through the players and these can all happen while we are shutting it down. So nothing stops that 30 second window. So if we go ahead and we uh, add in a little print at the top and we can just say uh, print server shutting oh terrible typing again so we're shutting down or hutting down whichever and if we hit play where we see we've connected to the database and if i then hit stop we will get uh, data saved and we also get server shutting down as well on the output you notice there was a little bit of a pause there now we don't really need to have this function running while we're inside studio because otherwise we're trying to do two things at once and it just makes things a bit annoying when you just want to do a quick test inside studio. 
So what we can do is we can access another service here. So we get local run service equals game get service run service. And then we can use a little handy if statement. So inside our service shutdown, we'll say if run service is studio. If it's studio, then we're going to return. So we're not actually going to run our service shutdown code. Otherwise we will do. So if, now if I was to hit play, and then stop again, we should see data saved, but we won't get the server shut down. So we noticed that was a little bit quicker. There we go. So that about brings us to the end of this video on data stores. Hopefully that helps you add in some data saving into your own game. And if you found this helpful, then please leave a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, then why not come and become a fellow gnome? But until then, I will see you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.